blotting paper, suddenly ready to soak more inchoate ink from the time in the past and the time now. I woke up in a chill, and the monumental path hit me in the face. I have always held a passionate torch toward genuine artist music, and I pride myself in spitting the patronizing sensation brought by the mainstream music now. For such a reason, I have always regarded music as my shelter. I do remember that I used to devote myself to only one band, and that is Oasis. A band from Manchester formed by two cynical and perspicacious brothers. They occupied one of the household names in the 90th grid pub that has now already become. My first encounter with them took place in fourth grade, when I hear their song, Live Forever. Well, let's enjoy this music right now. Dream, not the real world. Well, the schema of the music was incredibly simple, and the rhythm was touchingly pure. They would use acoustic guitar to play Luxe chord, accompanied by a unique strumming pattern as if it is a gourmet achieved by the freshest and simplest ingredients, transporting the listener to the spotlight. It took me three years to claim that I became intro to them, during which time I learned playing the guitar. I can remember all of their songs and recite all of their lyrics. I fully committed myself to the practice it was one of the best times in my life. Listening to re rebellious voice time after time, I was inching closer and closer to the meaning behind the music. They were subtly channeling their own romanticism through their private and distinctive voice. I had gained intimacy with their thinking. The spirit was rejuvenated by my hands, and most importantly, I can sing about some music instead of hypnotized by its comforting sound. But as I look around, I realize that most of the teenagers my age are different from me. They are predisposed to resorting to internet or social media as their safe habit. If you were me, you could detect a phenomenon like this. Teenagers feel more comfortable saying things on the internet than in the real world. This super cool kick-ass technology discourages self-expression in our everyday life. Thus, you might find those taciturn shy students in school who turn out to be life wise in the cyber dimension, and those quiet kids actually love rap songs on YouTube. Internet has become the most valid spot to express oneself. Internet has grafted our reality. Some parents might attribute these symptoms to the congenital shyness of their children. The fact, however, is that they were just seeking their own private voice, a voice they feel intimate with, at such an age where privacy is the ultimate luxury. My point is that in the cyber reality that we live in, we have lost our way. We have lost something valuable. We have lost our ability to genuinely feel and express ourselves. Through internet, people experience more but feel less. It is harrowing to imagine that someday in the future, we might lose that private inner feeling completely. The more I live in this planet, the more I realize that the real cosmic center is here in ourselves. It is through a quiet and focused experience that we obtain the acute sense of being alive. Of course, technology still represents convenience and the future. In most people's consciousness, it represents a better way of life. But rarely do people think about what technology deprives us of. Though technology allows people to be overproductive, it plunders the pleasure of slowliness in doing things. The internet speeds up the efficiency of communication but it keeps stretching the distance between people in reality. People appreciate online communication because it is faster, safer, and less real. People are addicted to the internet and less aware of this real world. People are like lost poets, addicted to the ambience of love, 
but cannot remember any specific lover that they once cherished. When was the last time you bought a CD or cassette? The unconscionable fact behind this question is not that this two object has already become obsolete, but the fact that people's attitudes towards music has changed. I wonder how many of you still remember the old days when we sat down quietly and listened to an entire album from one song to the next. We could not even bear to switch to the next song quickly because we want to explore and enjoy as much musical details as possible in that one song. Such an experience could never be obtained from online music apps. Living in this digital age where internet is all around us, it is impossible to completely abandon the internet and reject the convenience brought by it. As a result, I was often lost in the world of internet, unable to feel any genuine music or real emotions. However, every time when I lock myself in my bedroom, either to listen to those great classic songs or just play some riffs and solos on my guitar, I feel connected not only to the meaning and emotions behind the songs, but the musicians and their understanding toward love, friendship, and memory. Looking around at people my age, I desperately wish that they could feel the same emotion that I am. From my experience, music is a teacher who reminds us how innocent we once were, how much we have grown since, and how technology has worn on ourselves so much that we cannot even feel the strength and wholeness from where we came. So here, I wish people could stop letting technology wear on themselves. Please, take a break from this hyper-connected world and release the private aspect of life. To stop, to listen, to feel the past and present. I wish people could be disconnected with the internet in order to connect with themselves. I wish people could seek out the beauty that we have lost since the invention of the internet. Music and guitar for me are my own way to approach this goal. I hope that through sharing my connection with music, I can exhort people to find their own way of feeling connected with themselves, with others, and with this world. Thank you.